All right, the unit essential question we're dealing with is how do you engage and express knowledge of functions? Well, we're going to uh, specifically focus on nonlinear functions uh, throughout this lesson. All right, how do I write a rule to describe a nonlinear function from a table? Well, when I look at the table, um, I can see that I have these coordinate pairs, x or 1, 1, 2, 8, 3, 27, and then I need to figure out the pattern to this. Um, because remember, mostly algebra, if you can uh, find patterns, you've got it made. So let's look at it. Well, the first thing I want to look at, and I'm thinking, uh, in my mind, I'm thinking y equals mx plus b. I want to get it in some kind of form uh, like that. So if I can do that, I want to look and try to find the pattern. Um, is there a, a constant rate of change from 1 to 8? Well, that's 7. Well, then if I look at the next one, I go from 8 to 27. Well, that's that's much more than 7. Yeah, that's a 19. You got plus plus 7 plus 19. Well, that right there tells me number one, it's not going to be a linear function. Now, it is still a function. Um, as I look at it, I have no repeating domains. Um, so I, I know it is a function, but is it going to be a linear function? No. So what I need to do is figure out well, what number comes next. Well, with nonlinear functions, you're going to be dealing with exponents. And in this case, as I look and I've got to figure out, okay, what can I use to figure out what would come after the 27 for 4? Well, I can say, okay, let's let's look at maybe y equals uh, one, 1x squared plus 0. Well, does that work? Okay, I can say x squared, 1 squared is 1, but 2 squared, wait a minute, that's going to be 4, so that doesn't work. So again, I can look at this again and say, okay, let's try something that's going to be even cubed. Um, as I look, I kind of see a pattern there a little bit. I say, okay, maybe y equals x cubed. And I'm just going to leave off the 0 and the 1 because it is understood here at the x cubed. So I can say 1 cubed is going to be 1. 2 cubed, wait a minute, that does equal 8. So maybe I'm on to something here. 3 cubed, 3 times 3 is 9 times 3, 27. Okay, so I know that so far that's going to work. So if that's the case, I have to figure out what is 4 cubed. And when I figure that, I should say 64. Well, and I want to continue on. Uh, 5 cubed is 125. Now what if this same table was asking for the uh, 20th term? So we're looking at the 20th. Well we have the pattern. We knew this one did not work. So let me go ahead. I'm even going to go ahead and just erase that so it's out of the way. And we'll erase all this out of the way. So I've determined that my pattern is y equals x cubed. Again, if there's an exponent over the x, I know it's nonlinear. And we, and we kind of proved that it was nonlinear before with the, constant, the rate of change not being constant. So here, I want to know the 20th term. So well, in this case, I know, again, if that holds true, I'm going to say y equals 20 cubed. In that case, it should be 8,000. So I can determine, again, anything for a domain. I can figure out the 100th term, the 500th term, because I know that no matter what now, the pattern is y equals x cubed. All right, let's look at this one. Now this one is, is a little bit different. I have a pattern and I have three figures and overlook my kind of bad examples here but 
here we go. The first one you notice, okay, with my X, I have three stems. One, two, three. Okay, so that's one and three. <clears throat> All right, my second figure, I have, well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Then I go to the, my third figure. Again, it just keeps branching out. So, and then I count that, I'm going to get 27. There's a couple different ways we can do this. I can continue to draw things out to figure the fourth, the fifth, and, and so on and so on. Or I can figure out the pattern. And as I look at it, and I look, okay, it looks like with one figure, okay, there's three. Then it goes to nine. So something, could it be three cubed or three squared? Well, let's test that. If I say three times one is three squared, oh, wait a minute, that doesn't work. I can't say three, um, three x squared. So on this case, what could it be? Well, as I keep going, if I draw out this figure into the uh, to the fourth one, what would it be? Well, let's look at this one. I say, okay, I'm going to try the pattern. Maybe even y equals three. But I notice if I try three squared, it did not work. So if I say um, 3 cubed doesn't work. So what if I just say y equals x squared plus 1? Let's just try that. Well, if I say x squared is 3 squared, oh, again, that doesn't work. So I can say I have to do something different. Well, in this case, if I want to, I can, by drawing it out, I can see what would come next. Or I can say, okay, y equals 3 to the x power. Again, in a lot of these, it's just a matter of investigating and, uh, and trying different things in order to find the patterns. But as I do that, I say, okay, y equals 3 to the x power. Again, here, all that means is y, if I say to the 3 to the x power, okay, 3 to the first power would be 3. All, that checks out. Again, y equals 3 to the second power. Well, that's 9. 3 to the third power, 27. So if I keep this pattern, I go 3 to the fourth power, I should have 81. And the way you can test it is if you want to keep drawing your figures out, you can do that. And you'll notice, and just keep adding little stems to, uh, to each one of them. You should have 81. So in this case, if I keep this pattern, if I say I want 5, well, the fifth figure, again, y equals 3 to the fifth power, I would come up with 243. So it's just a matter of finding the pattern. Nonlinear is definitely a little more tricky than the linear. Uh, a lot more trial and error. But um, let's keep going and look at something even a little bit different here. Is how do I write a rule to describe a nonlinear function from coordinate pairs? Okay, there's a few different ways we can do this. Well, first thing again, I want to test to see if I just see coordinate pairs. I want to see if they're linear. And I can do that, um, again, a few different ways. I can look and say, okay, my rate of change from the y1 to the y2 here, that's 2. Oh, 4 to 8, that tells me that it's going to be uh, nonlinear. Because, again, from here to here is plus 2. From here to here, from 4 to 8 is plus 4. So uh, what I would do here first is um, I want to draw a table. That's the first thing I can say. Make it a little bit easier. Give myself a visual. And let me do that. So I just draw it. And then let's go one, two. Uh, 
let's make it there you go if I say my X oh my X and my Y well my X's are gonna be one which is also my domains my input so now here we go now I have my Y's okay, I have two four 8, 16, 32. Alright, as I look at this now, this one, as we look for the pattern, again, we know it's going to be nonlinear, but we know it is a function. So, what's the next thing I need to do? So, what I want you to do, I want you to pause it, and I want you to see if you can find the pattern to this one before I... Um, write it up. All right, again, this one, this one's very similar to the last one. If I look at it, I can say, okay, y equals two to the x power, just like the last one was. Now they're not all going to be like that. Again, it could be three x squared or what have you. It just depends on the pattern. But in this case, if I say 2 to the first power is 2, 2 to the second power, 4, 2 to the third is 8, 2 to the fourth, 16, 2 to the fifth is going to be 32. So that does hold true. Again, I'm going to give you one more problem to work. Uh, again, uh, this one is from coordinate pairs. So I'm going to give you a minute, go ahead and may draw your table, and see if you can come up with the pattern that goes along with these coordinate pairs. All right, as you've worked this, um, again, the first thing, I always like to draw that. You don't have to draw the table every time. I just like to because I'm very visual and I like to see. So I'll say X and Y. Okay, I can say 0, 0, 4, And then, of course, I can add the 464 at the bottom. Um, but let's, let's go ahead and test this and see what we come up with. All right, if I look at it and I say, okay, I'm going to go ahead and say the answer here is y equals 4, 4x squared, just to kind of, so we don't have to guess too much. If I look at this and I want to test it, as I come up with my theory. I, all right, the thing to remember is don't forget your order of operations. If it's 4x squared, remember I have to take care of the exponents first. So in this case, I'll say x squared, well, 0 squared is 0 times 4 is going to be 0. But I say 1 squared, okay, 1 uh, times 1, 1 times 4 is going to be 4. 2 squared, which is going to be 4, then I multiply that by 4, I do get my 16. Well, 3 squared gives me 9. Then I multiply that by 4, gives me the 36. So then if I go on to the fourth one, I will say you know, 4 squared, which equals 16. Multiply that by 4, and I'm going to get my 64. So in this case, it's just a matter of testing don't forget your order of operations because I want to share with you here's a common mistake well say for example if I just said four times the x squared I said okay um, four times zero is zero squared well that's zero it works on the first one that's where it kind of gets tricky because sometimes as we test it oh the first one works even the second one may work but after that it is not correct so if I say in this case I'll say four times one is four squared oh wait a minute that doesn't work so I need to make sure so always just pay attention to your order of operations and what we've done is just a little tutorial um, over nonlinear functions again I want my goal is to be able to take this uh, practice it a little bit in class and actually apply it to uh, hands-on uh, situations or uh, task uh, tomorrow um, your key term for this is to let me know that you've watched it um, would be we will beat the Virginia High Bearcats on next Friday night.